all right guys what's good welcome back to another video and as the title and the thumbnail suggests i'm gonna be teaching you guys how to handstand right now so without no further ado let's get let's just get let's just get straight into it so the first thing i'm going to be speaking about is what is a handstand a handstand is a beginner yoga calisthenics or gymnastic move which involves a lot of balance strength conditioning and body awareness how you do a handstand is you would support your body vertically through just your hands as a pressure point i think that i think that sums it up completely fine so yeah that's what a handstand is on to the next now i'm going to be speaking about when you should learn a handstand so realistically anyone can learn a handstand at any time it's not like there's a set order of skills you should learn or nothing like that you can learn a handstand whenever you want but i would strongly but I would say that a beginner should definitely learn a handstand because the handstand is so versatile. You'll find it anywhere. You'll find it in gymnastics. You'll find it in calisthenics, yoga. You'll find it as like a party trick. You'll find it in parkour. You'll find a handstand anywhere. But in relation to calisthenics, the handstand is really versatile as it will help you progress to so many other aspects of calisthenics, such as handstand push-ups, handstand variations. It would help you with your shoulder strength. So dips, push-ups, and even planche and planche handstand negatives would get better because you need a handstand to do a handstand planche negative but that's a but that's a kind of advanced move so don't even worry about that for now we're going to be on going about the handstand we're not planching today so yeah now i'm going to be speaking about why you should learn a handstand and i kind of just explained it a second ago but i'll kind of just reiterate it a little bit so as i said the handstand is very versatile it conditions your wrists it conditions your elbows it conditions your shoulders it, uh, if you do it in perfect form it kind of helps your helps your body awareness and your balance it helps your scapular positioning there's so many things that the handstand does just because it's such a comp it's i don't know if it's a compound i'd say it kind of is a compound the handstand's a little bit of a, like a compound movement so it's just really good just to build a strong base for everything calisthenics so yeah anyway we're going to be scrapping the mic now so that i can actually explain my tips and how to handstand so the first tip is going to be everything about your hands. So first thing, your hand placement. So your hand placement doesn't matter too much. Typically, just like everything, shoulder width. It could be a little bit wider. Okay. It could be a little bit wider. It could be a little bit closer. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to ruin your experience. Just make sure that you're around, around this width and then you'll be golden. All right. And on to the next tip is going to be your finger placement specifically. No. Yeah, yeah, your finger placement. So, so the reason why a lot of people have problems balancing in the handstand is because they don't have, is because they have their hands flat on the floor. When you have your hands flat on the floor like this, it's really hard, just like that. It's really hard to balance myself and it's really hard to stop myself from falling forward. And how to counteract that is to make like a little claw almost, like really like grip the ground. Think about like you're holding a ball, for example, because this, this allows you to actually push backwards with your fingertips and you want to be pushing forward with your palms and then you want to be pushing backwards with your fingertips. If your hands are flat, you can't really do that as much. So, fingertips like that, clawed up and now I can handstand. Good. So yeah, that's going to do it for your hand placement. All right, so onto the second topic now and that's going to be your arms specifically specifically bent arms or straight arms. So when you're learning out the handstand, you don't have to be straight arms. You don't have to be bent arms. You don't have to be anything specific. As long as you're progressively overloading and you're getting better and you're getting more confident, that's all that matters. You can learn the handstand in a bent arm because the handstand in a bent arm makes it easier to balance because you're closer to the ground and it, it will still build you the same conditioning, the same wrist conditioning, the same shoulder conditioning. It will still get you more confident in the handstand, everything. So you don't have to be straight on 100% of the time because if you're always caring about your form, you're not going to make any gains. So yeah, now that I've cleared that out of the way, the benefits of the straight arm handstand is that you are further away from the ground. And I know I kind of just described that as a drawback, but it can also be seen as a pro because it will improve your balance. It will make, no, it won't improve your balance. It will improve your confidence, which then will improve your balance. It will obviously condition different parts of you. Because your arm's locked out, it will condition you differently than if your arm was bent. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And there isn't really a whole much to go on about. It's just bent arm v straight arm. 
as long as you're training for the straight arm and you, you know, work towards straight arm, then you'll get a straight arm handstand. There's no secret tip to that. The handstand, I see it as like a compound movement, so it's really easy. It's really, it's really nice to learn because it benefits you a lot, as I just said before, and it teaches you a bunch of things. So I kind of, I think I kind of explained that well, but yeah, you don't need to have bent up, you don't need to have straight arm. As long as you're training, as long as you're training for what you want to get, you'll get. All right, so next we're going to be going on about your scapular positioning in the handstand. If you're a beginner, you don't really need to worry about this because people are not going to care a lot about it. It's barely going to be noticeable. It doesn't make an impact on anything really. All it does is it provides you a little bit of extra stability. So I kind of only recommend this if you already have like a nice handstand, like 20, 30 seconds, and you just want to refine it a little bit. What I'm on about is scapular elevation, which is in English just pushing your scapulas up like that. So I'm going to show you guys a handstand without it, and then I'm going to show you a handstand with scapular elevation, and let's see if you can tell the difference. That was really hard. I hope I did. If I didn't, I'll probably just find a video and I'll just slap it in. But that's the difference between scapular elevation and not scapular elevation. Um, as I said, if you're a beginner, you don't need to worry about this. And yeah, that's about it. Right, anyway, guys, on to the last main tip. I'm going to be talking about your back positioning, specifically banana back and how to counter it. So, Banana back form, everyone learned it. I learned handstand in banana back. Everyone who has a good handstand now, their first few handstands were in banana back. Banana back is when you're basically doing a handstand like that. Your handstand is like that. Not straight, you're bent like a banana. And how you fix that is you just get better. You get more confident, you just spam handstands. But I'm not just gonna tell you guys to do that. I'm gonna tell you guys something that worked for me. What worked for me to fix my banana back is simply to just record myself. So I would prop my phone up on a wall or, or, or on a shoe or something. I'd prop my phone up, I'd do my handstands against the wall and then I'd just mess around with my form. I'd try different rotations, different here, there. And eventually I'd, I'd watch the videos and be like, hold up, that was close. Then I'd try again, then my next set. I did it for one second. And then I was like, okay, that's what I gotta do. And then I just worked on that week by week. That's what worked for me. And not just for handstand, sometimes I'll do it for front lever touch, I'll do it for planche, I'll do it for whatever. So yeah, that's really good to record yourself and learn from your own mistakes, learn from your own doing. But I think that's really all I have to say. I, I don't know anything better. I mean, if, if you guys have something else that works for you, then, then keep doing that because if, if it works, it works. But that's what worked for me, just recording myself and just seeing where I went wrong. Um, for the next couple minutes, I'm going to be speaking about just some little accessory tips, just some kind of bonus tips. So bonus tip one is going to be what to do with your head placement. Do you want to look like that? Do you want to look up? Do you want to look straight? It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Whatever is comfortable for you. I can do kind of anyone because I'm good enough in handstand right now. But I, I didn't think about looking a certain way when I was doing my handstand. I'm sure that you've maybe heard it a couple of times that you might need to look there, you might need to have your head in front of you, it does not matter. Do what you want. Whatever helps you orient yourself better, do that. So that's all I have to say. Look where you want. Second of all is what your feet are doing. Because I went from the way up from my, oh, from my hands, to my arms, to my back, to my feet, it does not matter. You can, well, okay, it doesn't matter to an extent. It doesn't matter to an extent. You can, you should strive to have obviously straight legs and then pointed toes as well. But I do it, but you don't need to do it. But make sure that you're not in the habit of having bent, of having bent legs because that just makes any of your statics look horrible. It just ruins your form for everything. So make sure that you have straight legs and then point the toes if you want. Doesn't matter. I do it, but that's just me. But yeah. Also, lastly, so. If you're a little bit scared in handstand and you just feel like you're gonna fall, you don't trust yourself enough, the best way to solve this is one, to do handstands against the wall, but you can even do this as well. You grab a pillow or you grab a cushion, you grab something and then you handstand like this. Because that's gonna kind of hopefully eliminate the fear of falling because you have something soft below you. I saw it on the video sometime and I was like, 
oh yeah that actually makes sense so yeah give that a try if you want see, see how it goes let me know in the comments but um yeah i really don't think i have much more to say but yeah i think that i've said everything i needed to if i feel like i've missed something out i'll definitely put it in real quick but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this quick little handstand tutorial hope i help one of you guys increase maybe a few seconds to your handstand i'm not going to be talking for too long see you guys in the next one my next video is probably going to be my competition up in manchester i've got a kind of sim 13 going on so make sure you guys hit the bell subscribe this that do all that and yeah stay tuned for my next video see you guys in a bit